Thank you. <laughs> so, in the world of worry that exists within my very, very, very busy brain, I tend to go overboard sometimes in my attempt to be perfect, in my attempt to be everything to everyone all the time, in my attempt to always look like I've got it together. So a number of years ago, I was working for a local mental health organization. <laughs> and already people are laughing. Don't give it away, Sue. And so this place was filled with very experienced, very highly educated, very fabulous people. They, not only were they exceptional at their jobs, they were incredibly good looking <laughs> and they all dressed magnificently. And so I felt immediately intimidated upon entering into this, um, this work environment. And my job was community resource uh, coordination and statewide advocacy for individuals with um, intellectual disabilities. And so I took my job very, very, very seriously. And the General Assembly was coming up and I was um, in charge of training a whole bunch of people to be able to speak in front of the Finance Committee requesting um, additional services for... Um, <laughs> I just pointed you out. Yes, never mind. I'll tell you later. Um, so uh, it was like super stress, super stress. So of course, in order to manage the stress, I went out and bought myself a bunch of new clothes because that's what people do, right? Um, and, and so there was this big training meeting coming up. And um, on the day of the meeting, I uh, wanted to wear some, some of these new clothes that I bought. I had to look good. I had, people had to have faith in me because I had zero faith in myself at the moment. So I woke up and I had this fabulous pair of slacks that were, just made my butt look really small and um, this beautiful blouse with this wonderful print on it. And I had, at the time, two very small children. And you know what happens when you have kids, and maybe this didn't happen to you, but it totally happened to me. I sort of ended up in this hole of like motherhood where I didn't think about certain things like undergarments for a while. And it wasn't until this day when I went to put on these clothes that I realized I did not have a bra that was appropriate for this shirt. So you could like see the designs in the bra. And so I was kind of freaking out. So I found this one bra that was like super old and I had had some understandable weight fluctuations from breastfeeding two children, the whole thing. I want, you know, I'm sorry, but this is, this is what it is. So, so I put the bra, the bra on and it didn't really fit me the way that I wanted it to fit me. And I was so desperate to be perfect this day that I was brainstorming and I was thinking to myself, all right, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And so I, stop myself and I run down the stairs to the laundry room and I acquire the giant toolbox. <laughs> I bet you were wondering why there was a roll of duct tape up here on this table, huh? So, my husband was in the kitchen and he all of a sudden heard So, needless to say, I won't go into too much detail, but I just made the bra work. I just did what I had to do, people, to get through the day. And let me tell you something, the girls were looking good. So, I go to work. 
I spend my whole day there, and I'm like, oh, I'm looking good, and these people do not know what is happening underneath my shirt. <laughs> and so I go through the entire day, and when it's time for the big meeting, I acquire all of my papers and all of my supplies and all of the food and all of the stuff that we're going to need, and I get a cart. And I put all the things on the cart, and I'm, and, but there's not enough room on the cart for all the things. So I pick up the things, and I hold them in front of us. Oh, Lord, these people are getting ahead of me. Do not get ahead of me. So I put the things in front of me, and I'm pulling my cart, and I get in the elevator, and I've got two lovely coworkers sitting, standing on the elevator with me. And we're talking about the day and all the things that we're getting ready to do. And all of a sudden, one of those young women gets a very strange look on her face. And then she says in a voice that to this day I think was extremely loud, oh my God, do you have duct tape on your boobs? The rest of it is kind of veiled in a, <laughs> in a shroud of humiliation that may last forever and ever and ever. But I quickly buttoned up my shirt and made a joke about needing to go to Victoria's Secret or whatever. And she said, you know, that brings new meaning to the term holding it all together with duct tape. <laughs> but we went through the meeting and I did a really great job. And I proved myself to myself, most of all. And my colleagues thought that, you know, I didn't suck. And a few weeks later, it was my 30th birthday. And all of this whole department would do something, you know, fun for someone's big birthday, like 30, 40, whatever. So on the morning of my 30th birthday, I walked into my office and the entire thing was covered in duct tape. <laughs> Floor to ceiling, my, my, my desk had a package of a thing called automatic facelift. And she said, if I really wish I could have changed it to boob lift, but it wouldn't have shown up. So, <laughs> so that's like a super humiliating story. So why in the hell would I share it with 100 people sitting here staring at me, some of whom I have to work with? <laughs> because we're not perfect. And we have this, um, this sort of stigma wrapped around perfection. And we all feel like we have to be perfect all the time. And the, 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 the one time that I tried like irrationally to be perfect, I ended up completely humiliating myself and showing my vulnerability all at once. And I did, however, pay a visit to Victoria's Secret very shortly after that, <laughs> in case you were wondering.